a KQED television production. Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... Safe Catch Elite Wild Tuna. Great for athletes, kids, and pregnancy. Safe Catch tests each and every fish for mercury. Available at nearby stores. Walmart Global E-Commerce, with small, agile work teams, is focused on big data, engineering, and e-commerce innovations. Careers available at walmartlabs.com. Sutter Health CPMC, investing in community care for more than 150 years, including two new smart hospitals. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Natural mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. IRG has over 250 types of natural stone choices in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin or at marblecompany.com. Hi, I'm Leslie Sabraco. Welcome to Check, Please! Bay Area, the show where regular Bay Area residents review and talk about their favorite restaurants. We have three guests, and each one recommends one of their favorite spots, and the other two go check them out to see what they think. This week, event planner Leah Stafford devises events, formulates themes, and shapes moments, knowing that each perfect element contributes to a successful occasion. With this in mind, it makes her own dining expectations very high. And restaurant consultant Richard Jew knows the business. His culinary training makes him a tough critic. From the front of house to the kitchen, systems must work smoothly, and he sets a pretty lofty bar. But first, CFO Michelle Martinez. She studied ballet and acting in stark contrast to her current business life. Her eatery reflects these differences by adding an Asian twist to traditional Italian dishes, thereby concocting its own version of contemporary Californian cuisine. In Greenbrae at Jason's Restaurant. Open this restaurant for one thing for me to cook. I'm not the regular kind of chef. I don't have chef jackets. I wear a t-shirt to work. I wear shorts to work. Because I'm on my feet all day. I work six days, seven nights a week. Hi, my name is Jason Lee, and this is my restaurant. I put all my heart and soul to this place. It's everything I love to eat. So everything that is on the menu is something that I love from my heart. A little bit of Asian influences, Italian influences, California influences. Yeah, well, I love beef. Everything has some kind of bold flavor. We're not afraid of it. This restaurant is family driven. My wife works at the bar. My little sister, she works as hostess sometimes. My mom does my, all my flowers. My father helps me out whenever I need any shopping to be done. When a customer that first comes to the restaurant and has no idea what they're getting into, I love it when their reaction is like, oh, I never even knew about this place. I gotta tell my friends about it. What we do in the kitchen, how hard we work, and how my staff in the front strives to make their experience that much better. I think that's the reason why people come back. It's, it's just that whole feeling, just to cook it, feel good about it, send it out, they feel good about it. Their plate's empty. That's the best feeling you can have. All right, Michelle, you went from the arts to finance. <laughs> yes, but I'm at a museum that strives and uh, works on creativity, so I fit right in. And is that why you go to Jason's Creative Cuisine? I go to Jason's for that reason, and they are in my neighborhood. So, so where do you go first? I usually go with the dragon prawns. The mm -hmm. dragon prawns are four giant prawns tempura batter fried with a delicious wasabi aioli, crisp, crunchy, cold tobacco on top. It's enough for two to share, and mm -hmm. I've never been disappointed. 
it. We had those as well. Um, we ordered the prawns and I was just shocked by how huge the prawns were. It was amazing. The flavors were really good on this dish. It was a little bit overdressed for us, mm. but it was delicious. But we also had the beet salad. The flavor of the salad overall was good, but it felt like they were really skimpy on the beets. They were also a little skimpy on the cheese and the pecans as mm. well. So. That was a little bit of a disappointment. Mm -hmm. I actually had the crab cakes mm -hmm. and um, the flavor was nice. It had nice celery and onion and there was an avocado puree which was perfectly plated in my opinion. It wasn't heavily dressed. Um, but while the exterior was really nice, I did not care for the interior. It wasn't uh, warm enough for me. Mm. The exterior was crispy, it was hot like I like it, but that heat just didn't make it to the center for me. All right, hot shots. <laughs> oh, so the hot shots, there were three shooters. Uh, the fish, yeah. that's a mm -hmm. really nice hamachi uh, that's cut into little tiny cubes. And when you take the shot in one bite, it's great. You do <laughs> shoot it, yeah. um, and there's a lot going on in those three there shot is. glasses. Right. There's yes. hamachi, there's diced avocado. There's some chili threads. Scallion, fried ginger, mm -hmm. and a touch of white truffle oil. It's just a delicious umami mix. Right, you can't deconstruct it. You yes. have to You just can't really deconstruct it yes. too much. And what about entrees? You mentioned you had the halibut. Yeah, I had the seared halibut, and it was on top of asparagus. They also had a tapenade, an olive tapenade with grapes that was along the perimeter of the plate. Yeah. The inside was uh, nice and flaky. Everything was juicy. The potatoes were nice and fluffy and creamy. I was actually quite pleased with it. I had the rattlesnake pasta, which was a penne in a sriracha cream sauce. Uh, my wife and I split it, and they actually took the initiative and split the plates for us, which was really nice. That's always nice. Uh, it was a very nice, creamy, gradual buildup of heat, and the flavors were just amazing. One of our go-to favorites, the Chilean sea bass, served over jasmine rice and with a side of sauteed spinach in a miso glaze, mm -hmm. and it comes with a side of soy vinaigrette. The fish was served perfectly broiled, um, and the meat just flakes off, right. and it's just delicious. We also had dessert, yeah. uh, which we ordered a apple pie a la mode, mm -hmm. I and that as well. it was yeah. perfect, yeah. actually. It was heated up, so it was really nice and warm, contrasted well with the vanilla ice cream that we had. Yeah, yeah I have to... Um, Second, what he says, the, the ice cream itself, it had some kind of caramel undertone that really brought out that oh, apple pie. It was the pie. cinnamon powder. Yeah, it was yeah. really, really good. I enjoyed it. And the crust was super flaky. Yeah. The apples were, they had a nice crunch to them. It was perfect. We had the chocolate dream, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was a delightful crust of crushed walnuts and crushed ladyfingers that were made in-house, and then a light chocolate mousse, and it was delicious. And what about drinks to go with those? Because they they have one little tip that now everybody's going to know on Tuesdays and Thursdays, yeah. it's half-priced yeah. wine. It's got a nice wine list with mostly California selections. Oh, I yeah. actually just had a simple glass of sparkling wine. Mm -hmm. They don't skimp on the amount that they pour, <laughs> so I enjoyed I that. I know when you go to those restaurants, they <laughs> <laughs> that much it drives you nuts. And Jason, very youthful guy, but has owned this restaurant for nine yeah, years. Yeah, we've been following for a while. Yeah. He was in a kind of a weird location before in, in a strip mall. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> this is a big upgrade for him. The location well, but and he's it's still now. in. People should be aware. It's still it still is in an office park. It is in right? an office so park. To, yeah. oh, we actually arrived a little early, and we got to walk around the, the office park a little bit, and so we did get to see a little bit of the view. What about service? So service was the major problem for us. When we first arrived, we were asked to be seated outside. It was a beautiful evening. We ended up in a small table between the patio and the dining room, and so it felt like we were kind of in no man's land. Just yeah. the positioning of that, what about service for you? Service was actually the complete opposite for us. When we arrived, the hostess was on the phone and a server noticed that, so she actually seated us. So that was um, something that I really don't experience very often, you typically have to wait. And she was super attentive, always checking on us, topping our glasses off, everything was great. Fantastic, your spot, give us a quick summary. I would say Jason's is my family's favorite restaurant delicious California cuisine in a nice setting with good service. All right, and Richard? They had good flavors, but I would probably not be back. Um, there's just too many options in the Bay Area for us to make a trek up there. And Leah? I'd say personally, I wouldn't make that trek all the way back there, but if, if I was in the area, I'd go back for a nice glass of a little something. <laughs> if you would like to try Jason's Restaurant, it's located on Drake's Landing Road at Berry Way in Greenbrae. The telephone number is 415-925-0808. It's open for lunch on weekdays, dinner every night. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30.
It's all about locally sourced, responsibly raised meat at Leah's Spot. You can dine there and take some home to cook the next day. This hip location is in Oakland and it's called Clove and Hoof Butchery and Restaurant. As a whole animal butcher shop, we've decided to bring in whole animals. Part of that responsibility is using the, that entire animal. Whether it ends up in the butcher shop or the restaurant, everything gets used because that's just part of our responsibility as humans eating meat. All right, here we are, table seven. My name is John Blevins. Uh, this is Cloven Hoof Butcher Shop and Restaurant, and I'm the executive chef and owner. Here at Cloven Hoof, we use one beef, two pigs, one lamb, 20 chickens, six ducks, and assorted other game meats every week. We do a lot of preserving, fermenting. Everything we do here at Cloven Hoof is in fact house made from the pickles, the condiments, the sauerkrauts. We wanted to educate our staff as well as our customers because animal husbandry is a term that's thrown around, but every animal that we get from each one of our farms, we have visited and we know the farmers and we know the practices. I am from Atlanta, so I, I do use a lot of Southern inspired ingredients, but also I feel that nostalgia plays a huge part in my menu. We want people to almost have a longing for something when they eat here that is like, wow, that's something that my mom could have made. All right, Leah, another meat-loving woman like myself, a carnivore. <laughs> this place is carnivore heaven, isn't it? It is. My family loves to go there. We um, enjoy anything with meat in it. So this is just right up our alley, and it's in our hometown. So that's why we enjoy going there. It's super casual. You can stop by, dine in, take out. It's lovely. What is your dish? What is your? What do you dig your meat? I have a couple into? of options, but honestly, I really love their Philly cheesesteak there. It's nicely seasoned. The bun is like no other. It also has a nice fondue cheese sauce on top of it with lovely onions, and it's seared to perfection. I agree with the bakery roll. We had the cheesesteak too. My mouth was watering reading the description of it. I will say I was disappointed though. Ours came, it was supposed to come with mushrooms and onions. There was a half a mushroom on it oh, no. and hardly any cheese sauce, which it sounded delicious, but I wouldn't know. And so it was really just the steak, which was delicious but I was looking for the full fried turnip stick match sticks and the whole thing and didn't really get it. You were cheated. I was cheated a little bit. <laughs> we ordered the cheesesteak also and it was a really filling and delicious cheesesteak. I do agree that it was a little bit overly uh, beefy uh, but the cheese oozing out of it was just amazing. Overall, it was a delicious sandwich. Can you ever be overly beefy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you have, Michelle? We had, um, my husband had a steak, the 16 ounce ribeye, and it was a beautiful cut of meat, beautiful. I wish they'd cooked it a little bit longer for him. He asked for it medium rare and it came out probably rare, but delicious nonetheless. And you really got the sense that this is farm to table, the highest quality cuts you can imagine. There's a real ethic, a real ethos to the place. I like that they had descriptions mm -hmm. of every mm -hmm. farm right up on the wall and got the sense that they are friends and colleagues with the owners of the farms. We also took some meat home. We took some sausages mm -hmm. home and their homemade sausages were delicious. What else did you have? We Richard? also had the charcuterie platter, which was great. We had a couple of terrines. Uh, we had a pork and ham terrine, which was my favorite. We also had some foie gras torchon with a strawberry jam. The foie gras was smooth and buttery. And I had the chicken and waffles. And the chicken, I have to say, maybe we just hit it on a bad night. They had a really big to-go order, really big going on. And um, I sent my chicken back because it was burnt and my waffles were cold and soggy. And so they took it off the bill for us. They were really nice about it. Although I turned my attention to the beef tallow fries and I wasn't <laughs> sad for long. <laughs> so those were probably the best french fries I've ever yeah, had. Those beef tallow fries are really, really good. Delicious. When you fry something in its own fat, it's just, it's, it's delicious. the way to do it. Yeah. Did she um, hit it on a bad night? What about those chicken? I honestly food? think you may have hit it I on a bad night. My husband actually did order the same exact dish and it was the complete opposite. The chicken was nice and moist and it was crispy and the waffles, the ginger waffle was perfect as well, nice yeah. and fluffy I was bummed because I was going to squirt fried chicken. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Richard? I had the smoked
smoked pork chop, which was just amazing. It's funny that you mentioned the fat because when it comes to your table, it's a double thick cut pork chop and there's a pretty fat <laughs> ring of, uh, of the fat around the pork. And uh, my wife wanted to cut it away. And I was like, no, 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 what are you doing? Eat the fat. That's the best part. And so I proceeded to cut the pork chop so that every bite would get a, just a little morsel of fat in there. And it was just amazing. Uh, we couldn't finish it, right. so we ended up taking it home and having it the next morning for breakfast, which was even better. Yeah, and yeah. We, did, we did the same thing. Yeah. I honestly, I couldn't finish my food. I had the burger, and it's um, actually two four-ounce patties on their mm -hmm. burger with a pimento cheese on there. You get pickles and lettuce and um, onions, and it's, it's delicious, but it's super filling. It's juicy. Mm -hmm. You get everything running down your side of your hands. That's like a husband. burger, man. Yeah, that's, that's a, a burger. burger. You I'm have to, like, Chicago. hunch you over and eat eat it. Uh, my kids actually split a burger as well and nothing was left on their plate, which is kind of rare. This is a kid-friendly spot, it isn't is. it? It is. It's super casual. You have any anyone in there, or a family with small children, you have an older crowd, you have kind of more of the hip and artsy crowd coming mm -hmm. through. It's honestly all are welcomed in there and you feel comfortable. It felt authentic, yeah. I want to say. Um, Very the much. servers were so nice. What did you feel about pricing? I thought the pricing was good. I thought it was fair for what you got because the cuts of meat are so luxurious and amazing. But I would be remiss if I didn't mention dessert. <laughs> Our dessert was delicious. We had butterscotch pudding with brulee bananas, salted peanuts, and house-made whipped cream. And ever since, my son's been asking for butterscotch pudding, which I don't think I could do theirs justice. <laughs> All right, <laughs> this is your spot, Leah, wrap it up for us. If you're a meat person and you're looking for meat in the best city ever, you have to stop by Cloven Hoof. And Michelle? I would say amazing cuts of meat, poultry, and homemade sausages. We probably hit it on a down night, but I'd go back. And Richard? Uh, this is a temple of meat here. Um, this is what Barn to Table should be, and I would definitely go back, hoof down. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if you would like to try Clove and Hoof Butchery and Restaurant, it's located on Broadway Street at 40th and Oakland. The telephone number is 510-547-1446. It's open for lunch every day, dinner Wednesday through Monday. Reservations are accepted for large groups only, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. Champagne from France is the iconic sparkling wine, but bubbly is made across the globe. We know Italian Prosecco and Spanish Cava and, of course, world-class California sparkling. But did you know you can uncork high-quality examples made with traditional champagne varieties, including Pinot Noir and Chardonnay, from far-flung spots like the island of Tasmania in Australia or the mountainous central Otago area of New Zealand? What about this beauty from none other than North Carolina? It's time to get your bubbly on and go explore. Cheers. European-influenced Asian decor sets Richard's spacious eatery apart. It allows room for steaming dim sum at lunch and sizzling hot pot at dinner. You'll find it all in the Richmond district of San Francisco at Dragon Bow. Dim sum is my specialty. I've been running dim sum restaurant for more than 20 years. And the uh, hot pot is fresh cooking idea. My name is Willie Ng. Welcome to Dragon Bowl. Hi, how are you? Here at Dragon Bowl, we try to do things a little bit more different. In our lunch, we try to bring us some elements of surprise and refinement. And then for dinner, we focus on the hot pot for a touch of luxury. Our chefs put a lot of effort in preparing the hot pot ingredients. So they spend lots of time to prepare each one of the broth. Our seafood comes daily, and then we select only the freshest hatches of the day. I love to go back to visit in China, in Hong Kong, and Singapore. They give us a lot of inspiration to find out what's the best cooking new idea. From this neighborhood, we also have a mix of American, Russian, Korean, Vietnamese, Filipino, all sorts of people from all different age range come here. A lot of them is new to either dim sum and hot pot, but it's really fun when I start explaining to them how to cook the food in the hot pot, explain to them the different dim sum, and then seeing them enjoy it, it brings a lot of joy to our staff. So how did you discover this place? I live in the neighborhood, actually. I was very excited to see them come in. It's the same family that opened Koi Palace in Daly City, and so we had to go try it. 
We love it. Are you a dim sum? I guess a dim sum during the day, hot pot at night. I've been both? to both, and I love both <laughs> actually. The dim sum is really elevated, modern twists on traditional dim sum pieces. Some of my favorite are the wild mushroom bao, a traditional steamed bun with mushrooms inside. They powder it with some mushroom truffle powder on top, so it looks like a real mushroom cap. And when you t bite into it, you just get some earthy goodness. <laughs> like the mushrooms were just picked off the forest floor. Mm -hmm. The sea bass dumpling is a colorful explosion with lively colors from the fresh vegetables and tender sea bass morsels. I actually yeah. had the chicken and mushroom dumpling, and mm -hmm. like you said, it was it was really really delicious. It was kind of like biting into a little pillow of heaven. Mm -hmm. It was moist chicken and mushroom. That's in what dim sum means from it the heart. Was, really, from the heart, it was really really love. good. And the actual um, bun itself was super moist, fluffy, and just mm -hmm. light and airy. Sometimes you get that kind of heavy mm -hmm. dense bun mm -hmm. so it was perfect and then we also had the veggie chow mein that kind of came around with the roaming servers which I, I really like that mm -hmm. um, it could have used a little more sauce for me uh, to give it a little more body but the flavors were really good we went to dinner but mm -hmm. we made sure to have the dim sum which I'm so oh. glad we did yeah. mm -hmm. we had the juicy pork dumplings which are true to their name succulent delicious clear pork juice squirts out of everyone when you're eating them. You have to, you have to be careful. <laughs> it's, to only, it it's only a shame that there's only four to an order. You could, they're delicious. And we also tried the minced beef sesame puff. And it was served with an assortment of ground beef, I think water chestnuts, scallions, and a delicious mix of spices. Yeah. We also had the pot stickers. The pot stickers were some of the best I've ever had. I tasted some basil in there. Yeah, they use a lot of non-traditional Chinese ingredients, which I really appreciated. They're willing to put themselves out there and try something that may not be accepted by the traditional dim sum crowd. And it's quite a grand spot, isn't it? I mean, oh, it's it really beautiful is in there. beautifully decorated. Um, they have multiple color changing chandeliers inside. I was mesmerized by the chandeliers. They kind of looked like planets. It was yeah. just lovely. It was really nice, very ornate, and you were in, I would say, an escape. You didn't really imagine being in a restaurant while you were there. Much less being right on Gary Bull. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk about the hot pot because there's a whole process to ordering that hot pot and it's quite extensive. So they do have two options for hot pot. You can do a set menu where they pre-select all the items that you're going to be eating that evening or you can also select the all-you-can-eat option, which I usually do because I feel like it's a good value there. You basically check off which ingredients you want and they bring it to your table. You cook it in your own hot pot at your table and some of the ingredients are things that I've never had at another hot pot restaurant. Things like the fish paste and the shrimp paste, those were just amazing. They feel like they're heavenly balls of meat. <laughs> the shrimp paste comes in a bamboo tube and you just scoop it out into a little ball and cook them in the hot pot. There is a hot pot tradition. I mean, it goes back a thousand years, at least in China. Yeah, it's a traditional Northern Chinese mm -hmm. style of cooking that emigrated all the way to San Francisco, and I'm very glad for that. <laughs> we did the all you can eat because mm -hmm. the menu is vast, and we were hot pot newbies, and so we were a little overwhelmed. And we hot just, pot newbies! <laughs> just thought, Sorry. you know, let's just do a little bit of everything and make sure we hit all the highlights that way. And so we had two broths. We had the 12 bone broth, which was delicious, a very rich, nice broth and then at their suggestion we um, countered that with a Szechuan broth that was hot and spicy mm -hmm. peppers floating throughout it and I think we tried just about every meat and seafood they had fresh delicious very nice meal. and very interactive very interactive a nice place maybe to take a family or friends that you haven't seen in a while it allows for conversation that is the process you get to just sit down relax talk to whoever you're with and enjoy the food in front of you and be appreciative for it. I just tried the kombu sake miso broth and it was the best broth I've ever had with hot pot. The flavors of the meat really pop. There was some sauce they made at the side of the table for us. That yes. was like magic. It was so delicious. They have, there, there's four table sauces on it. There's a ginger soy, there is a peanut sauce, a satay sauce, and a chili oil. And she came around and mixed all those oh, to our great. liking and she asked each of us what our flavor profile and and tolerance for spice was right. i'm gonna do that next time i'm so gonna have them go. mix the sauce for me next <laughs> time. <laughs> well what about service obviously attentive and honestly my experience was a little bit different i actually had to flag some servers mm -hmm. down in order to get service so once i got the server they were very very helpful mm -hmm. uh, in breaking the menu down and understanding what was uh, presented on the menu mm -hmm. but 
in order to get someone, it was, it was challenging. All right, Richard, this is your spot. Give us a quick summary. So for a modern and creative twist on traditional Chinese dishes, I would definitely recommend going to Dragon Bowl. And Leah? I'd definitely be back if I'm in the area for all of the flavor and the, the affordability of everything that they offer. Okay, Michelle? For a slower paced dining experience with an abundance of yummy dim sum and a vast hot pot menu, I would definitely return. All right, if you would like to try Dragon Bow, it's located on Geary Boulevard at 21st Avenue in San Francisco. The telephone number is 415-333-8899. It's open for lunch and dinner every day. Reservations are recommended, and the average dinner tab per person without drinks is around $30. I want to thank my guests on this week's show, Michelle Martinez, who returns to the Calital Asian flavors of her favorite spot at Jason's Restaurant in Green Bray, and Leah Stafford's meat-centric spot to eat in or take home at Clovenhoof Butchery and Restaurant in Oakland, and Richard Jew, whose destination offers two options serving both dim sum and hot pot at Dragon Bow in San Francisco. Now, we really want to hear about your experiences at any of the restaurants we've been talking about, so find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And don't forget that you can watch any of the shows on our website at kqed.org slash check, please. It's where you'll find links to the restaurants and where you'll find my notes on the delicious wines we're drinking today. So join us next time when three new guests will recommend their favorite spots right here on Check, Please! Bay Area. I'm Leslie Sabraco, and I'll see you then. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 Check, Please! Bay Area is made possible by the members of KQBD and by... IRG has over 250 natural stone choices and over 10,000 stone slabs in stock today. IRG in Brisbane and Dublin or at marblecompany.com. Oakland International Airport. Now with flights all over the world. iFlyOAK.com. Natural mattress systems from European Sleepworks, working to improve comfort and wellness for over 40 years. European Sleepworks in Berkeley, online at sleepworks.com. Sutter Health CPMC, 7,000 employees, nurses, and physicians caring for their communities every day. Your city, your hospital. CPMC2020.org. Walmart Global E-Commerce, with small, agile work teams, is focused on big data, open source engineering, and e-commerce innovations. Careers at walmartlabs.com. Safe Catch Elite Wild Tuna, great for athletes, kids, and pregnancy. Safe Catch tests each and every fish for mercury. Online at safecatch.com.